Alright, Incredible Oak 456 here. This is the second part of this three part story where Oak he becomes Armageddon's new jockey. This is the issue where he is transformed into a jockey. And that is right. There really is only one issue where we actually get to see Oak as a jockey. It is crazy how much restraint this story has. Or conversely, it is crazy how wasted this seemingly major development is. But what we do have is the recap page. Love them. Best thing ever. We begin this issue with Dickie Jones and his granddaughter from the future. They are approached by Crusher Man, who has come to warn them that Armageddon has captured the Hulk and is currently transforming them into one of his jockeys. I didn't like what this story uses as its motivation for Crusher Man and the other villain who gets involved. Especially since both the characters had been depicted as becoming more layered and sympathetic. I think it would have worked much better to just use that pre-existing character building as the motivation for why they are trying to help out. Crusher Man, he had been shown to be an unlikely ally of 90s 4, and he had gotten married, and generally he had started becoming less malicious. He was sad when 90s 4 died. Most of this comic is showing Armageddon breaking Hulk and torturing him and remaking him as his slave. A few things I want to note is that first there is a staggering amount of dialogue like this where it has clearly been re-lettered at the last minute. I won't point them all out. There is about 10 bits where it's like that. And it is all stuff surrounding these scenes with Armageddon. So I would assume it is editorial disputes with the excellent men office about what's happening here or how Armageddon is written. But... My main criticism of this is that Armageddon is written contradictory to his actual character. He keeps mentioning several times how he doesn't want to waste his gifts on a non mutie like Hulk. And that he thinks non muties are inferior and not worth his attention. But even just a cursory glance to a Andy book will tell you that two of his original four jockeys were non muties. The other thing is that his motivation is totally wrong here. Maybe it is just my reading of Armageddon, or that I have not read all of his stories but his goal here is to overthrow the Omega Titans whose powers he inherited 
in the Lewis Simon stories, Armageddon's goal was to prove to the Omega Titans that Earth was worthy of them by preparing a world where only the strong survive. Maybe this stuff is born from Age of Armageddon, kind of ignoring its originally with the Omega Titans. I just didn't know. This doesn't seem like it's in line with the Armageddon that I know. One of the things Armageddon plays on is Oak's dependence on Jennifer Connolly or Liv Tyler. And he tries to establish common ground because back when he was an Egyptian person man, he was betrayed by his woman who I didn't think ever appears or is mentioned again. And now there is an Armageddon originally miniseries, but it is by Brett Kavanagh and it has awful art, so I will not be reading that. But if any of this stuff, like that woman or his real goal being to supplant the Omega Titans... If it all comes from that, can you let us know down below? Because I didn't want to be bashing elements of this comic. If it's because of Brett Kavanagh writing a crap Armageddon. I generally didn't bother to say much about the stuff with Jennifer Connolly or Liv Tyler. And nobody has ever said in the comments, why are you not talking more about that stuff? I mean, does anyone even watch Jennifer Connelly's new TV show? Uh, the Snowpiercer one. I have never heard a single person talking about it. I think Sean Bean is in it too. Here is what I was talking about. Crusher Man and the other villain that we all know is Juggernaut, but I am avoiding saying for some reason. They actually are members of this super secret evil shadow group. And them getting involved is because of this super secret evil shadow group rather than the much better reason that those two characters have been consistently depicted recently as not being outright evil. And Hulk, he submits to Armageddon in hopes that it will silence the haunting image of his abusive father in his head. I quite like that. So Hulk, he gets, he gets remade into Armageddon's bondage gimp. And up here, we have another very obvious rewrite. And just as Hulk gets... This helmet put on, it drowns out the spectre of his dad berating him. It worked due to poetic license. Dickie Jones, his granddaughter and crusher man, they arrive outside and they are straight away confronted by... The all new, all different, all jockey Hulk. This design is awful. I'm just going to say it. This is, it is overcomplicated. It doesn't scream Armageddon either. What would have looked more the part is 
slap this helmet on him, maybe give him a few little bits of armour, but otherwise I've loads of markings all over his body, like how wingman looked. This just looks like Hulk. He has dressed up to go and live in Japan. We get a very, very brief fight with Crusher Man. We're talking five panels. And the cliffhanger is Juggernaut. He arrives to fight Jockey Hulk. That is the end. And I think I have come off mostly negative towards this. When actually it is a pretty entertaining story. There is problems, but a focus on them too much. It seems a waste of time, since I feel this story is and was meant to be a fun sojourn with Armageddon. I'll give it seven thumbs up.